first of all, the drainage from the lower limb and the pelvic region is going to parallel the supply. So right over here next to the ex external iliac vein. This is, so here's the external iliac vein right next to the external iliac artery. And right over here we have the internal iliac vein right next to the internal iliac artery. And here you can see the same vessels on the left side. The veins, the external and internal iliac veins will fuse and become the common iliac vein and then drain into the inferior vena cava. When we consider the way blood drains from the gonads, the testes, and the ovaries, uh, we're going to encounter an interesting asymmetry. Right over here, we have, again, the right gonadal artery coming off the abdominal aorta, going down to either the testicle or the ovary. On right over here, we have the right gonadal vein, which is draining blood from the gonad, the right gonad. And if we zoom in on it, you see that it, it will follow the course of the right gonadal artery. So we can follow it up, and it drains directly into the inferior vena cave right over here. However, if we go to the left side, and do the same thing. So this is the left gonadal vein, which you see right alongside the left gonadal artery. As we follow the left gonadal vein up, it doesn't go directly into the inferior vena cava, but instead it goes into the left renal vein. So blood from the left gonadal is going to drain into the left renal vein and then drain into the inferior vena cava. So you have this asymmetry and you could also see it over here with the suprarenal vein on the left side, the suprarenal vein right over here is not draining directly into the inferior vena cava, but is draining into the inferior vena cava by way, again, of the left renal vein. Now, in order to understand this asymmetry, you have to look at the development of the circulation. So you would have to look at how these vessels develop in the embryo and continue development in the fetus in order to appreciate why this asymmetry exists.